The second generation Mazda Miata, or the NB. This was a follow-up to the wildly popular first generation model. And Mazda wanted to take what worked and improve certain things. And we had a chance to talk with one of the lead designers on the car about the mechanical aspects, the stylistic approach, and more. So let's get started. I grew up in New York, so my father was into cars, my brother was into cars. We'd go to a lot of the car races up at Watkins Glen and at Lime Rock. And so uh, ever since I can remember, I mean, five, six years old, I was drawing cars. And that's all I ever wanted to do was be a car designer. So I went to Art Center and graduated and got a job. They hired me right out of school at Chrysler. And I spent the first three and a half years of my career at Chrysler. And there I was part of the LH program and I got to work on the Viper. So for me, I've always, you know, I've been passionate about cars. I've loved racing since I was a kid. I was inspired by Chaparrales and McLarens and Formula One cars of the era. And so I just, there was just something to me about the way a car looks that's really elicits a very emotional, an emotional response from me and an emotional kind of feeling that I get inside when I see just a good looking car. The MX-5 in a lot of ways is, is iconic for Mazda. We just set out to make it the best front engine rear drive sports car you can make for the money. If you put your passion and your heart into it and a strong belief in what a vehicle should be and you don't compromise, you end up developing cars that become iconic. So when I was at Chrysler, I actually bought a 90 Miata, brand new from the showroom, and took a lot of heat at, Ma at uh, Chrysler at the time because, of course, in that period of time, the Chrysler LeBaron was considered the best-selling convertible in, in the United States. And what did, what's this little car doing with very simple door panels and simple seats, and it didn't have diamond tuck, you know, leather seats or anything in it. But for me, it was the essence of what the car was about. It was fun to drive. You could put the top down in, in five seconds at a traffic light. So when I got to Mazda to and got the, the opportunity to design the NB, I thought it was like a perfect transition for me coming from where I was coming from, having owned a first gen car, having lived with the car for five or six years, and then getting the, op getting the opportunity to design the NB. So I knew what the car was about. I knew the essence of the car. I knew what I wanted to keep on the car, I knew what I wanted to change. So I think for, at the time, Tom Matano was the father of the MX-5. He knew that, he saw that, that you know, you're not coming in and trying to make it something different. You understand the essence of the car and the purity of the car, but as a young designer, you also come up with kind of some fresh approach, some fresh thinking. In all honesty, probably didn't feel like it needed to change a lot, but there were a lot of technical reasons why we needed to make changes. Obviously the car had been out for seven years and it needed to get updated. Um, we realized with the NA, while a huge success that it was, there were a few areas on the car that needed to get a little bit re evolved, if you will. And, and some of them were the car needed to become a little bit more masculine. Um, not too much so. We didn't want to turn it into sort of this bodybuilder sort of physique look. We saw it, we had a philosophy of making it more like somebody training for a triathlon, where they're in good shape, but they're still lean, but they're a little bit more muscular. So that was, that was kind of the approach we took to making it a little bit more masculine than in the NA. Plus, we also knew regulations were coming online that we weren't going to be allowed to have pop-up headlights anymore for pedestrian impact and other requirements. And also, from a pure engineering standpoint, 
the engineers always felt that that was weight that was out ahead of the front wheels that wasn't perfectly, from a perfect balance standpoint, wasn't ideal. It wasn't a huge negative to the car, but it wasn't ideal from a, a weight distribution standpoint. And as I said, with the team in place, giving the responsibility to do was a huge responsibility and it was a huge task for me to take on, but also having these guys looking over my shoulder knowing that you know I'm, I'm messing around with their, their baby, so to speak. The NB Miata, the second generation, it's been re-sculpted, restyled, in hopes to inject some testosterone into this car to try to help shed its image of being a little bit too soft and a little bit too feminine. Take me on your treasure day. The main thing is you have a 1.8 liter here. And when you get go back to back from the 1.6 liter to the 1.8, it's incredible how much more powerful this thing seems and including the torque, you don't have to completely wind the piss out of it until you get into something like this. You feel like you're going 100 miles an hour but you're barely breaking 50 and that's one of the reasons why the Miatas are so good and it carries over to the NB. You still have a naturally aspirated motor. You have simple and easy to use controls and anybody that gets behind the wheel of this immediately feels comfortable. It's so easy to drive. And I think that's the main thing about this that surprises me. All this time removed, it's still enjoyable to drive. What it maintains over the original NA Miata is almost every single thing that made that car good. It's soft, compliant, comfortable. It's not razor sharp to the point where if the car gets unsettled over a bump, it doesn't bump steer and oversteer everywhere. You know exactly kind of what the car is doing and that's partly why it's so fun to drive and so approachable for most every single person that gets behind the wheel of this. And the biggest thing for me is the improvement in the steering. Now it feels like when you turn the wheel, the car actually turns without you having to turn it over almost one continuous cycle to get the thing to turn. It, it feels a lot more like what you expect from a modern car and there's some feedback in the wheel. When you go over some bumps, ah uh, yeah, okay, you feel things through the steering wheel, you know that you're going over some rough pavement. The biggest thing for me is this is just so comfortable and compliant. There's a lot of roll, which means you can take it off to back roads that aren't particularly maintained well and still enjoy driving it. It's a trait that the NA Miata, I mean, basically was there and carried over into this generation. Fundamentally, the car had a very simple theme, this lightweight sports, and we never got away from that. And I think regardless of what other brands did, they're trying to copy us and kind of embellish it or enhance areas that we're not necessarily doing. The S2000 is an example of just a lot more horsepower and a much stretched aesthetic, if you will, much more cab rear wood proportion. And they were successful for that segment, but I don't think people cross-shopped S2000s with MX-5s necessarily. They were kind of different breed, sort of same two-seat rear drive convertibles. But with us, yeah, we certainly looked at the competition, but we also knew we had a really good formula. So we didn't run around chasing after what other companies were doing. Other companies did that to us, certainly sure. when we brought the MX-5 out. But I don't think any of were successful because there wasn't this purity of what they were trying to do. And I think with the MX-5, there was a purity of concept that fundamentally ran through the NA through the ND. And I think that's why we were successful and we didn't chase after. We were told at one point that the Solstice was gonna be the best-selling convertible ever and it turned out not to be. And for the NB, again, that was my challenge as a designer was keeping it pure, making it better, but not straying too far from what made the NA so successful. With, with the NB, we also, because the vehicle got a little wider, we wanted to pull the track out, so the suspension was modified slightly. We, fundamentally, it was the same suspension setup, but the 
The A-arms were wider, so the car had a wider track to give it a more stable stance. So from a budget perspective, we knew we had to use sort of a carryover lamp inner, or lamp bucket as we call it. And again, we wanted to make the light as small as possible, but there was only so much technology at that time. Lamp technology didn't, hadn't developed like it has today with LEDs and halogens and, and HID lamps. So we really were focused on making the lamp look as small as possible. And that was probably the biggest challenge, was to keep the profile of the hood, keep the line and the basic gesture of the MX-5 of the NA, but also having these fixed headlamps now in place. And so we worked really hard at making them as small as possible and getting them again to fit the profile of the car, have the turn signal in there, have the high beam and the low beam. So that was one challenge. The other challenge was we, did, we didn't get a lot of complaints on the first car, but we did get some comments from people about women were breaking their fingernails on the, you know, the very iconic door handle that the NA had. So, there were two approaches. One was, yes, it was a cost saving to carry over a door handle from another production car. That for me was a challenge because I felt that was one of the most iconic parts of the vehicle was, was the really cool you know, chrome door handle. That was one of the challenges. We fought that for a long time, but eventually the project manager and, and the budgeting issues came into play and so we had to use was an existing carryover door handle. But that and the headlight were probably the two biggest challenges. And then because of the success of the first car, we kept the belt line was the same, the windshield was the same, the side, you know, the side window is the same. And working from a design standpoint, some of that is restrictive, but on the other hand, that's the challenge as a designer, is having some of these requirements in place that you'd then have to work around and make sure that the design is still as successful as it turned out to be and as beautiful as you wanted it to be without it sacrificing too much of the overall design concept.